My name is Paula Moranin, and I'm the, the executive director of the Children's Alliance. I'd like to talk to you today about love, the love that lives in the mission and work of Children's Alliance. I've been thinking about a lot about the different ways we love our kids. In its most personal form, I think of the love I feel for my daughter Tyra, who's here and who I am embarrassing. Um, she's on the verge of graduation, graduating from high school and poised to go off to college. Now, while I was a oh, While I was a child advocate before I became a parent, becoming a parent, particularly in the way that we did, finding our sweet girl through the foster care system, made my advocacy work feel ever more personal and profound. I wanted for other kids what I wanted for my own girl. As child advocates, we all want every one of Washington's 1.6 million kids to be as beloved to all of us as my girl is to me. It brings to mind uh, my first connection between love and Children's Alliance, that we must never forget that justice is what love looks like in public. At Children's Alliance, justice lies at the heart of our mission, but that justice for kids is elusive. One in five kids in our state is born into poverty, their families struggling needlessly to find the entry points to the path of opportunity for their kids. And a child's race or ethnicity remains a predictor of where that path leads. While no single group of children is meeting all key milestones of child well-being, children of color face some of the biggest obstacles. And that is not news. As Jen said before, it's said that the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. With no one in our public space seemingly accountable for addressing or eliminating racial inequities, indifference is a message that that we are sending loudly and clearly to an increasing share of our kids. Public policies are our shared values in action. With every public choice about policy or spending, we act to either close the gap between kids of color and opportunity, or we push it wider, swallowing up not only their potential, but our shared future. Love well employed is not passive, and that is good, because inequity isn't happenstance. It shouldn't be preordained, and it doesn't have to be our destiny. But equity won't just happen. It will be built from a series of deliberate choices to close the racial and ethnic gaps that continue to riddle our public systems. And that's where we all come in. The second way that love lies at the heart of Children's Alliance comes to me from another inspiring person, my colleague Siobhan Ring. A few weeks ago, she was talking about how our love for kids takes many forms. Sometimes it's personal, perhaps guidance about the importance of not just doing the homework, but turning it in as well. <laughs> hypothetically, hypothetically. At other times, our love, for kid is our love for kids is rooted in community. It's seen when we support our local food bank or raise money for schools. And then there's advocacy. As Siobhan said, advocacy is the way we love on Washington's kids, 1.6 million at a time. <laughs> advocacy is love put to action. Through advocacy, Children's Alliance is putting public policy on the side of kids. And that advocacy is making a difference. From Kingston to Kennewick, our, our efforts have resulted in a 25% increase in early learning funding, leading to high quality programs for 2,000 more children. It's about preserving the state food assistance program for immigrant children and families and reversing budget cuts that hurt children of color. And it's universal children's health coverage through Apple Health for Kids, including 94,000 children enrolled in just the last six months. And you are the key. With you by our side, we will continue loving on Washington's kids through advocacy. With your support, kids can count on us to fight for every child to be safe, healthy, ready to learn, and free from hunger. And they can count on us to be smart enough to pay particular attention to the kids kept furthest away from opportunity. Kids can count on us to speak to the importance of undoing institutional racism in our public policies and systems. 
Policymakers, including the great ones in this room, can count on us for good data and sharp analysis as we push the best kids' supportive policies. And each of you can count on us to make it easy to stand up for Washington's kids by connecting the voice of parents and communities to the folks in Olympia and in DC. For more than 30 years, you all have been the fuel that's moved our work forward, even in the toughest, most challenging of economic or political circumstances. And that's why I leave you with this invitation, inspired by this last thought about love from Maya Angelou. Love recognizes no barriers. It jumps hurdles, leaps fences, penetrates walls to arrive at its destination full of hope. So come with us. For the love of our kids, let's jump the highest hurdles of inequity. Let's leap the fences that keep kids separated from opportunity. Let's penetrate the thickest walls of indifference and inaction. Stronger, together, let's be the hope of Washington's 1.6 million kids.